Candyman, a terrifying urban legend that plagues the streets of Chicago. If you look into a mirror and say his name five times, then the Candyman will come after you, and he's known to terrify his victims with his hook hand and bees that he engulfs himself with. Released in 1992, Candyman tells the story of Helen, played by Virginia Madsen, a graduate student who is preparing a thesis on urban legends and local folklore, where she discovers the terrifying world of the Candyman, played by Tony Todd, a dead man who will come after you if you say his name five times while looking into a mirror. Helen does this, and as a result, her life gets destroyed in the most shocking of ways, as the Candyman enters her world and brutally turns her life upside down in this haunting and poetical horror movie that has since gone on to be regarded as a classic. So it's time to look into a mirror and summon the Candyman, as we look into 10 things that you didn't know about this classic horror movie. This one's for Louis Ludwig, so let's check it out. Number 10, based on a short story. Candyman is indeed based on the short story The Forbidden, which was written by Clive Barker, aka the creator of Hellraiser. Yep, both Candyman and Hellraiser come from the same brilliant mind. The Forbidden short story was originally published in the magazine Fantasy Tales in 1986, and there are several differences between the short story and movie. The biggest difference is that of the Candyman himself, as in The Forbidden he's described as being a white guy with yellowish skin and long blonde hair, and wearing colourful patchwork clothes. And he doesn't really have much of a backstory. In the movie, Candyman is an African American. And the Candyman films would explain the Candyman to be a victim of the slavery trade, who was brutally killed in the 19th century for a biracial love affair. Another major change is the location, as The Forbidden takes place in Liverpool, which is Barker's home city, whereas Candyman takes place in Chicago. It was Candyman's director and scriptwriter Bernard Rose who decided to change the location to Chicago, as The Forbidden was more about the British class system, but Rose wanted the movie to focus more on racial issues. In fact, the movie came to be because Bernard Rose met up with Clive Barker and told him that he wanted to make a movie about The Forbidden, but had his own insights into what the movie should be, and it just took off from there. Number 9, the original choice for Candyman. Without a doubt, Tony Todd totally kills it as Candyman. So much so, he is Candyman, and it's damn near impossible to imagine anyone else playing the part. He's both scary and mysterious. And there's also something kind of romantic about him too, with Todd managing to convey all these emotions. However, the original choice for the character was actually Eddie Murphy. Yep, Axel Foley himself as Candyman. I wonder if that would have made Candyman more of a comedy. However, Candyman's production couldn't afford Eddie Murphy, so that idea was scrapped. And Todd really wanted the part and lobbied for it, and thus he was cast, and it was actually Todd himself who came up with Candyman's backstory, and said that he wanted to find his own personal Phantom of the Opera. So Todd just wasn't the face of Candyman, he put a lot into the character for its on-screen formation. He was definitely a memorable on-screen boogeyman, up there with the likes of Freddy and Michael. Number 8, casting Helen was a bit chaotic. Likewise with Todd, Virginia Madsen totally kills it as the Helen character. And man, as the film goes on, do you feel bad for this character? As we literally see her experiencing a terrifying living hell, as her world becomes engulfed by the Candyman. And as with Todd, it's impossible to imagine anyone else in the part. And naturally, she has good chemistry with Todd, so it all totally works. However, the journey to cast Madsen as Helen was one with many twists and last-minute changes. You see, originally, Madsen was cast to play Helen's friend, Bernie. 
and Helen was to be played by British actress Alexandra Pig, as at that time she was married to Candyman's director Bernard Rose. However, as the production went on, it was decided to make the Bernie character African American. So Casey Lemons was cast in the part, who had previously starred in Silence of the Lambs. So at this stage, Madsen was out of the film entirely. But just as filming was about to start, Alexander Pig had discovered that she was pregnant. So she left the part. So the production then reached back out to Madsen and asked her to now play the movie's main lead of Helen, which she did. Either way, it all worked out for the best. And supposedly, if Madsen didn't accept the role, the next choice for the part was Sandra Bullock. Which I guess I can see happening, just as long as she doesn't drive any buses. Number 7. Creating the look of Candyman Chucky was a doll, Freddy had his burnt face and knife glove, Jason wore a hockey mask, and Pinhead had, well, his pins. Yep, it seems that most of our favourite cinematic scary ghouls have memorable gimmicks, and Candyman is no exception, thanks to his decaying body infested with bees, and of course his memorable hook hand. When I first saw Candyman, that hook really terrified me. However, before the hook hand came about, there were other ideas floating around as to what memorable features to give the Candyman. Tony Todd was working with Bob Keane to come up with Candyman's look. Keane was working on the movie's makeup effects and had previously worked on the makeup effects for Hellraiser. Todd came up with the idea of Candyman to wear an eye patch, but this idea was rejected. Then there was the notion of Candyman to have a mechanical fake arm, but the technicalities of it seemed a bit too tricky-dicky. And it was here that Keen came up with the idea to give Candyman a hook for a hand, as it would go with the mythical urban legend nature of the character. And yeah, having a hook hand totally works. It looks old and timely, but is also very intimidating. And supposedly it only took Keen three hours to make the hook that's seen in the movie. Number 6. Expensive Bee Stings It's here we get to another aspect of Candyman that makes the character and movie so memorable, and that of course is the bees. Oh boy, there's lots of bees in Candyman. The bees that were used were ones that were actually specifically bred for the film. In fact, they were provided by the same bee handler who provided the bees for My Girl. So when you watch the bees in Candyman, you could be looking at the same bees or the relatives of the bees who killed Macaulay Culkin's character in My Girl. Special precautions were taken to avoid the cast and crew to getting stung. This included covering the actors in the scent of a queen bee, as well as the crew wearing protective suits. And pretty much everyone who worked on the movie got stung at some stage. It was inevitable. But no one had it worse than Tony Todd. I mean, at one stage, he had a mouth full of bees. Yikes. Now, he did wear a protective mouthpiece in order to film that scene, but still. Todd also negotiated to receive $1,000 for every time he got stung. And while making Candyman, Todd would get stung a total of 23 times. So he got a $23,000 bonus for getting stung by bees. I mean, once again, the guy had a mouth full of bees, so... I, for one, have a terrifying phobia of bees, as I'm allergic to them. So there's no way you're putting any of those bees in my mouth, I tell ya. So that really makes me appreciate Todd's efforts there. Number 5. Filming Location Candyman was filmed around Chicago. The production wanted to use a real housing estate that had real difficulties, and so it was decided to film at Cabrini Green. As upon doing research, the production was told the estate was, quote, the absolute worst place to live in the city. It was felt the estate was perfect for the movie, as it was beaten up and run down, and full of street art and neglect. And it was known for its gang violence. I don't know, maybe I'm just weird, but on film it has a sort of raw beauty about it, and feels very atmospheric. When the cast and crew first started filming at the location, they were told they could only visit the estate with police officers escorting them in plain clothes, as Cabrini Green was considered so dangerous. But there weren't any issues or problems that took place on the location. In fact, some of the residents of Cabrini Green even acted as extras on Candyman. The movie's introduction was quite groundbreaking for its time, as we see an aerial shot which looks straight down on the streets of Chicago. It actually really looks kind of unnerving, and this shot always made me feel a bit uncomfortable. Like I'm telling you, this always gave me vertigo. This shot was achieved thanks to Skycam, which was a relatively new technology at that time, and mainly used in sport broadcasts. 
but thanks to Candyman, it was proven that the technique could effectively be used on film too. As for Cabrini Green, well, the estate ended up getting demolished in 2011. Now, not being American, I don't know anything about Cabrini Green. And so if you do, let me know. Was it as bad as it was being made out to be? Or was there some exaggerating when it came to the whole cast and crew can't go without police escorts thing? So yeah, let me know. Number four, Candyman nearly got an NC-17 rating because of one scene. One of the most shocking scenes in Candyman is when Candyman kills Helen's doctor. Even though I've seen this movie tons of times, this scene just always catches me off guard and literally makes me fly out of whatever seat I just so happen to be sitting on at the time. And I think it's still just as horrific now as it was back in 1992. However, for the American release of Candyman, this scene had to be drastically cut as it was felt to be too horrific and that the scene alone would see Candyman hit with an NC-17 rating, which would lead to a big drop in box office numbers. So in order to get the desired R rating, Cuts had to be made, so instead of seeing the Candyman killing the Doctor, we cut back to shots of the Helen character screaming. But to be honest, I don't even think you need to see anything because the sound effects that are used are still pretty gruesome and horrific. So with those sound effects alone, you kind of know what's happening, you don't need to see it. However, the scene was left intact for its UK release, which is interesting because it's usually the other way around. As back then, it was usually the UK versions that had to have the nasty bits cut out, especially in that post-video nasty era. Number three, hypnotic filming. Another standout moment in the movie is when Helen comes face to face with Candyman for the first time. On a side note, just how haunting is Todd's voice? Helen. It's calm and yet really threatening and intimidating at the same time. The whole scene is very powerful and hypnotic, to the point where Virginia Madsen herself appears to be under a trance. Well, in actual fact, she was. Director Bernard Rose wanted to avoid the usual horror movie cliches of seeing characters screaming all the time, and for the presence of Candyman to be so overpowering that it hypnotizes Helen. Well, behind the scenes, a hypnotist was hired, and he did indeed put Virginia Madsen into a trance. Before the cameras would roll to shoot the scene, the hypnotist would hypnotize Madsen, leaving her in a trance state, along with a word being chosen to snap her in and out of the trance. Rose even tested this out one day on the set, and randomly called out the word, and sure enough, it put Madsen into a trance-like state. Also, it was decided to have a sort of romantic tension between Candyman and Helen, and for the characters to react and physically move around each other in a certain way. In order to achieve this, both Tony Todd and Virginia Madsen attended ballroom dancing and fencing classes together. And, well, it works, as there is something really seductive about their on-screen chemistry. And I don't find it surprising at all that behind the scenes, they got along really well. Number two, sequels. Candyman's director, Bernard Ross, had wanted to do a follow-up to Candyman, but for it to be a prequel focusing on Candyman and Helen's relationship from a previous life. But his ideas were rejected by the studio, so he was out. Instead, in 1995, we got Candyman Farewell to the Flesh. And I can barely remember watching it, but from what I do remember, it just paled in comparison to the first movie. I just don't think it had the class of that first film and just felt like a standard slasher movie. But also from memory, I didn't think it was awful or anything, but just not as good as the first one. And also felt like a bit of a made-for-TV movie, but that's just my own perspective. Then in 1999, there was Candyman Day of the Dead. Now, I never saw this one, and to be frank about it, I didn't even know about this movie until recently. But yeah, the reception of this entry wasn't great, and it currently holds 9% on Rotten Tomatoes. And Tony Todd himself would go on to say that Candyman Day of the Dead was a poor entry. Then in 2003, with the release of Freddy vs. Jason, studios got excited about the number of endless possibilities there were, with all kinds of movie ideas being thrown around, with which movie serial killers they can make crossover movies about. One of those ideas was a Candyman vs. the Leprechaun movie, which would have been really bizarre. I don't know. To me, that just would have felt like the wrong crossover. I can't watch Leprechaun and Candyman and think, oh yeah, these movies totally exist in the same universe, because they don't, they are worlds apart. 
Candyman's director Bernard Rose did attend some meetings to discuss the possibility of Candyman vs. Leprechaun, but it was ultimately Candyman himself, Tony Todd, who saved the day, as he flat out refused to take part in the movie. Thanks a lot, Todd. You spared us of what could have possibly been a really terrible movie. However, this isn't the end of the tale, as in August 2021, a fourth Candyman movie came out, simply called Candyman. It's described as being a direct sequel to the first movie, ignoring the events of part two and three. So, will it be as memorable as the original? Well, I haven't seen it yet, but time will tell. Number one, Cinematic Candy. Candyman was released in September 1992, and it made a modest $25 million on an $8 million budget. It got pretty good reviews from critics. Most critics found it to be a haunting and intelligent horror movie, even poetical. There was, however, some criticisms. Some people felt the movie depicted some negative racial stereotypes, and some even felt the gore somewhat let the movie down, particularly in its tension building. But all in all, in general, Candyman was very well received, and considered a breath of fresh air in the often tired slasher genre. Candyman has gone on to become a classic horror movie, with a huge, massive fan base. The movie's popularity has definitely continued to grow in time, to the point where it's not only considered one of the greatest horror movies of the 90s, but one of the greatest horror movies of all time, and one of the most confronting too. So if you want a movie that is more challenging, and one that makes you think, and one that is generally haunting and captivating, then go down the rabbit hole of the urban legend that is Candyman. Candyman is definitely a sweets for the sweet when it comes to horror movies, so definitely check it out. I would go as far as to call it a haunting masterpiece. Now it's not as fun or as playful as your Freddy's and Jason's, and it is more uncomfortable, but that's okay. This is a different kind of slasher movie, a more dramatic one. Anyway, I'm Minty, and I guess that you could say after the release of Candyman, people were hooked. See ya!